In this lesson, which is the last of lesson three, we are going to look at the remaining tools, that is the memory map, the Python interpreter, the register manager, the script manager, the symbol references, and the symbol tree. So, the next tool we're going to look at is the memory map. So if you go ahead and click on memory map, it will show you, well, a memory map. And now, this is a little more complex of a topic, but if you're used to modern operating systems, you'll know that various parts of various files are mapped to different parts of memory and those different parts can be given permissions like read write execute and they each part has a start address and an address and a size and there's usually names associated with these parts for example text is usually where code goes bss is usually uninitialized data the read writable data is usually in data this is an elf file and that has different for example it has a got and a got plt you won't see those in windows but uh, different binaries have different uh, we'll just call them sections and each section had different permissions but the um, the really useful thing of the memory map is in modern operating systems when a program is loaded it is often loaded at different addresses so if you are debugging something and you want to actually also look at the code in Ghidra you want to make sure that the load addresses are the same so this is an advanced topic we're not really going to talk too much about how to do this but I'm just going to show you where to do it the only real use of this memory map is this button right here set image base and you can see by default it has this address because this is where it is loaded based on the L file but if for some reason and, and often this will be the case when you when you load a binary it's not going to be at the same address or the uh, original address that it was included in the binary because of something called address space layout randomization don't worry about what that means just know that if you're trying to debug something you need to find out in when it's really running what the base address the the, the program code was loaded at let's say this thing was loaded at I don't know let's say um, five one two three four five I, that's I don't know why it would be loaded there but let's just say it was you can put that in there and then what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna change all the addresses you see now all these addresses start at five zero 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 again this is really useful if you're debugging something and then you want to look at the Ghidra representation and have the addresses match with what the current program is running in that debugger. Okay, That's the only reason you really need to do that. But it is actually really useful if you debug things and want to look at them in Ghidra. So I'm just going to undo that. And you can see now they go back to their original addresses. Remember undo is control Z. And they all went back to the 8048000 starting address. Okay, So the next tool. The next tool is the Python. And what is Python? A lot of you know that Python is a programming language. And Ghidra is really cool because you can actually script Ghidra work in Python. So if you click on that Python tool, it's just going to bring you up with Python interpreter. And if you know any Python commands like print hi there, you can go ahead and type them in. But Ghidra has a programming API that you can actually program in Python. So that's the Python interpreter. We're not going to talk about that right now. That's way way too advanced for the, this introduction. But know it's there. Know that Ghidra has a programming API and you can manipulate and, and program script in Python to do work in Ghidra for you, which is going to be really cool. Really cool feature. Next, what do we have? We have the register manager. And honestly, I have no idea how it works. I read the manual and it's a, it says that it would it be really cool if it worked. It says that the register manager will 
tell you if the, the current value of a register at a certain line in the code can be known, it will tell you what it is. For example, you might have a piece of code that just sets EAX to 5. You might have a move EAX 5. And on that line of code, or the line of code after, it should be that the value of EAX should be known because it's 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 not variable it's that one code specifically loads 5 into EAX for example i have not found this to work so i'm going to have to look at this a little more at some point maybe it's a bug maybe it doesn't work or maybe i'm just using it wrong I, i've read the manual it sounds really cool this register manager should be able to be really useful but it never gives me any data no matter what i do so um, maybe at some point i will figure out what i'm doing wrong or maybe it just doesn't work. Who knows? So hopefully, maybe someday we'll come back to the register manager if I can ever figure out how to get it to do anything. So the next tool is the script manager. And this is just a bunch of scripts that already exist that you can run and that will do things for you. There's a billion scripts in here. So know that a lot of people have written scripts already or there exists a lot of scripts already that do various things you'll have to go through and look at see if any of these do anything that are useful t for you I have not gone through and looked at all these scripts but you can see they, they, they're in different folders for example there's a folder for Mac OS X maybe this has useful scripts to run on Mac OS X binaries uh, all kinds of scripts all right just know it's there next tool. Now the next tool is symbol references and symbol tables. I don't know why there's two tools honestly because if you look at symbol table it just gives you information about the symbol table. Now a symbol is just a a name for a memory location and you can see a symbol table has the, it has the, the name, the location, what type of symbol it is and um, what namespace it is and, and just uh, other features but that's all well and good but if you look at the symbol references it also has that table it so symbol references actually includes everything that symbol table has so I do not know why there's a separate symbol table doesn't make sense to me right so again, if I hit symbol, ta symbol references, it brings up both. If I then bring up symbol table, it doesn't bring up anything new because it's already here. So again, I, I don't get why there's two separate tools that one just contains the other. It doesn't make sense. But you have the symbol table that shows information about symbols. And then you have the symbol references where it actually lets you see where these symbols are referenced as. For example, let's find a symbol. I don't know. Printf. Okay, I can click on it, and you can see in symbol references where it, that actually is referenced. And I can click on that, and it goes to, all right, see here, this code references printf. All right, here we see printf is referenced in another part of the binary. So symbol, refer symbol table shows you the different symbols, and symbol references is really useful because once you have a symbol that you're interested you can see all the places that actually reference that symbol and as we reverse things that's going to be really useful there you go symbol table symbol references remember a symbol is a name that applies to a location okay a name that refers to a location and then finally the symbol tree and the symbol tree just shows you symbols but it shows you in a tree like function it a hierarchical function so you can see how the symbols are related okay um, for example you can see all the symbols that are imported that is it, something that comes from another binary or another library for example libc.so is something that my program here references exports are things that are exported or available to other uh, binaries you can see things that are considered functions, like printf, 
and classes. I don't think we'll have any classes here now because we're not doing C++. Namespaces, no namespaces there, and labels. Okay, so there you go. That's the symbol tree. All right, I think we've gone through all the tools in the Windows tools. So uh, hopefully next episode we can actually start showing some how to reverse things. Does your organization need instructor-led training in advanced technical topics? Paladin Group can provide that. Check out our webpage.